Good evening, everyone. This is Lou Samoji with blueandgold.com. I'm joined here by Andrew Owens and Douglas Farmer after a thrilling 17-14 victory over Stanford. Just another average day here at Notre Dame coming through big time clutch. Everett Goldson, only 20 for 43. And maybe not one of his better performances, but this is the type of performance that kind of gets you into Notre Dame lore. Sort of like Joe Montana was only 13 of 34 with four interceptions in the chicken soup game, but when it counted the most, came through. Andrew? Well, I think you said it right there, Lou. When it counted, he played his best. And as Brian Kelly noted after the game, this was really his first two minute drive. In 2012, when he was the starter, you'd have seen Tommy Reese come in as the so-called closer and finish it off, finish off the victory. But today it was Golson. For the most part, he was very accurate on that final drive. He had the one that sailed over, I think it was Fuller's head, but um, showed a lot of patience on that fourth down play, fourth and 10, 23 yard, just a missile to Ben Koyak in the, in the end zone there and to put Notre Dame ahead and, and give them the win. You know, one of the things we joked about this weekend, Douglas, was when you looked at these two defenses, Stanford was number one, Notre Dame was number four, we were saying first team to 20 wins. And for a while, we were thinking first team in double figures yep. wins. <laughs> Tre tremendous effort there. Th this was a Woody Hayes, Bo Schembechler, 1970s game, <laughs> with, despite the passing. But it was just, it was a field position game. It was like, who can make the play that you know? What most impressed me, Lou, was was with Everett. It's such a slow start. I didn't even realize he had 20 completions. I'm surprised it was that many. And the whole team had a, had a slow game, and then at the end was able to re refocus and zone in. And that's what you need in a slugfest like this, where literally it's going to come down to one play. Sure, we say that about most games, but in those situations, there are three or four one plays. And here, it was one. No matter how you want to cut it, any one mistake would have cost them things. Special teams, here's another situation. I'm going to tell you, when um, they came out for the 45-yard field goal to go on 10-7, that takes some huge ones. I, mean, I don't mean to be offensive or anything like that, but you have that in the back of your mind that there's been a fumble. And Brian Kelly, even in the sidelines, was saying, hey, why don't we wear gloves? That, that, what a concept <laughs> in there. So th there's another adjustment that you have to uh, do during the course of the game, and it's the special teams that made it happen there. Well, certainly a lot of credit to Hunter Smith. They had those those two uh, miscues on the previous field goal tries. He comes back out um, again with the gloves and it works. Kelly said he decided to put him back out there and not burn Tyler Newsom's red shirt. And as he noted about Smith, he looked over. He wanted to see what, what his uh, yeah. uh, reaction was to the, to the second miscue. And he said he didn't feel like when he threw him back out there that he was going to make another mistake. Andrew, not only was he coming in after two mistakes, but he was coming in after the coaching staff had openly considered mm -hmm. another possibility. They had considered replacing him, and he saw that, but still had the confidence to come out and get that ball down. Which, personally, if I see somebody trying to replace me, it's going to shake me. Yeah. And that's why Kelly had to look over that. Huge Saturday here overall. I mean, you, I believe Alabama lost here. <laughs> Oklahoma. I think I saw number Texas two, four, six, Oregon, and eight. Oregon on Thursday night. This is one of those classic shakedown Saturdays. One of the things I was most encouraged by. None of the players in there are talking about, hey, now we're number five or something like that. It's like, just go out next week and take care of business. Yep. You don't worry about that stuff. I, I, I know sometimes we in the media get like, well, are they going to be six or are they going to be fifth? Just take care of business week after week. It's not whether you're in the top 10, it's just be the better team on that Saturday. And that's especially important this week with a potential trap game looming before, before Florida State, the top ranked team. You have a North Carolina team that, to put it lightly, is struggling. I think, Andrew, how, what was their final score today, did you see? Uh, it was something like 34 10, I want to say. They were down 24 3 at one point. This Virginia Tech, who's not that intimidating. Yeah, they gave up 70 points two weeks ago, they gave up 50 points last week. So. It, but an offense that can score a lot, and again, another uh, dynamic special teams player. So it, it's a little reminiscent of 2012 when they had this emotional victory over Stanford, and before they had that big date looming against Oklahoma, well, in between they had that BYU game, and they barely survived 17-14. So with North Carolina, it's sort of the same thing. They're 2-3, they're and three, but they're about as dangerous a 2-3 two, two and three team as you can get. The important thing, Notre Dame is 5-0. Join us again next week down here on the field, hopefully at 6-0. For Douglas Farmer and Andrew Owens, I'm Lou Samoji. Thank you for joining us.